What's up, everybody? I'm Robert Tyson. I'm an educator and a technologist that's passionate about sharing my knowledge and ideas to help empower others. Uh, I do like to start dialogue and conversation around issues because I know that when we can become one mind, we can come up with solutions together that helps everybody. And it's a win-win. So today I want to talk about the coronavirus and how this is impacting educators and how we can go online and keep our students engaged in the process because this is going to affect everyone as we've seen in the news. So we know that right now the coronavirus is spreading quickly. So schools and all types of sports leagues and just anyone who's responsible for large gatherings of people are, are closing down shop and they're going all online. We even saw the, the NBA, some of the teams, this is kind of interesting, um, have gone all online. Uh, I want to look at this. Look, so NBA Phoenix Suns. Are deciding to start doing their season in 2K. So 2K is the a basketball game. Now, how cool is that? That's with the with the uh, season being suspended. It's kind of interesting that now because we have the virtual version of of what happens in the real world in video games, they're going completely online. So that I mean that's super innovative right there. And I mean we're hearing all types of things. Churches. Um, I go to Elevation Church, and you know they've pretty much had the online thing figured out in terms of church and worship, but. Man, I mean, even they're they're trying to do more engagement with their with their churchgoers um, and their congregation online. So, just looking at those two, you can get a feel for these organizations are looking ahead. Now, the governor in North Carolina has actually said, and that's where I am, has actually said that he's banning gatherings of a hundred or more people. So, anything under that, you know, you're okay uh, for now, at least. So this is not a, a question of should we do this. This is a matter of when. Uh, my school hasn't personally announced that we are going all online. Not yet, at least. But I'm preparing for that. Now, as I unpack some of this and some of these ideas, I want you to comment below and share what you're doing. Share your ideas because you could really be helping somebody who's watching this video right now. So one of the big things that I'm, I'm thinking about as I look at teaching is engagement how do we engage students um and that's that's like the most important thing to me is that the student is engaged and therefore they're learning um if you've been in the classroom you know and like me i'm used to just in the classroom training because i've got access to a lab and all this these great resources um I'm used to that, looking at somebody and seeing if they get it or not, and being able to say, hey, Jimmy, um, what do you think about that? Hey, Jane, what do you think about that? And this is, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge as we consider going online. Now, please know, my school has not announced that we're going all online, but I'm anticipating that. So, in lieu of that, how do we keep students engaged? How do we know they're engaged? Well, we have to gauge their interest. We have to gauge them. We have to see where you at. What, what do you need help with? Explain it. So, for me, I recommend if you've been in the classroom or for those classes that have been meeting in person and are used to that, um, let's keep doing that. But instead of meeting actually in the same physical location, we have this wonderful thing that we all know of, we all love, my favorite invention of all time, the internet and the World Wide Web. So what we can do is we can continue doing this in an online live meeting format. Um, so one of the things here that I would like to show you is, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of other organizations like Zoom coming out and doing this and Skype and all those types of organizations are going to start offering free uh, free software to allow you to remotely host classes and remotely ho uh, host sessions. So Cisco WebEx is a product that allows for that telecommuting and meeting in person, but through through um, a camera and a mic. Now, one of the considerations here we got to think about with meeting online is equipment. 
right? Do you, do you have a mic in your laptop built into your laptop? Do you have a camera built into your laptop? Um, if the answer is no, then there might be some, there might be a little bit of a dilemma with some of the things I'm going to talk about. So before I go even deeper, let's look at some affordable technology. You, you should probably be able to get your hands on whether it's through your IT department or even consider asking your organization if they would be willing to purchase some equipment for this type of remote learning format for you. So um, let's look at a couple things. So I'm going to go to Amazon. First and foremost, I really do like this product. It's worked really well for me. Um, I haven't had really any issues with quality. Um, I know sometimes you can hear a, re a, re a reverberation when I play music in the background, but I don't think it's all that distracting. Please let me know if you think otherwise. But if we look at the Blue Yeti mic, it's a USB mic, plugs right into the side of your laptop or desktop uh, via the USB port, and you know, it works, it works like a dream. You don't have to even really install any drivers, it's all plug and play. You can pick your format and your color. You can see the, the one I'm using now. I have, uh, and I'll show you in the frame, I actually have this really uh, flexible mount for it that I screwed into the side of my, my desk here. Um, and that's, uh, I may be able to find that. Yeah, this is the exact one I have. So this one I would recommend too. And you can see, look, the price is really not that bad. If we look at the mic, 130 bucks, right? Now, if you know, I know that might be hard to get, so uh, we can try to work together to see about finding some resources for you to get that. But I would recommend if, if you can't afford that personally, ask the organization you work for to do that, you know, um, and to, to purchase a couple of them, maybe even for people in your area. Um, and then, of course, I do recommend this um, mount just because you don't want to be holding it or. You know, it comes actually, I've not used it a whole lot, but I'm sure it'll work fine for what we're talking about. Um, it comes with this mount already, so it's standing on this mount, but it's not very flexible. So I, I like things to be mobile, <laughs> so I, I had to get that on. So you can see that's not too bad, you know, even with the, with the, um, with the stand itself, you know, that's 13 bucks. You know roughly hundred and forty dollars for the mic and a stand for it so I'm telling you that, that that's something you need to get just to improve your quality but not absolutely mandatory if your mic or if your laptop or your desktop, desktop computer, computer already has, has some type of built-in built mic, mic. Um, um, that, that should be fine. It really should should work for you. It won't be as good as if you're using like a mic like this that's dedicated hardware um, but it'll, it'll work for you. So that is something I would recommend getting up front along with some software that allows you to do remote broadcasting or some type of software that not just allows you to stream like Twitch or YouTube live, but something that allows you to have that intimate setting where it's just you and your class. Um, and this has a specific classroom um, feature and functionality. Um, another one, let me, let me show you on discord actually released a, um, released functionality. I believe I can't remember off the top of my head, um, about increasing the number of people that can get in on a chat at the same time. So you can almost create like a, a classroom in discord. Now, um, let's see, we could look up Discord Classroom, and Discord is like a, gamers have been using it forever, you've probably got several students or learners that are gamers, and when they chat with their teammates in video games, they're using Discord, yeah, see, you guys gotta check this out, so, you can you can connect into Discord and it's like this live going chat, kind of like a internet relay chat that allows you to um, chat with each other real time, not just over uh, the mic, but also like typing. And the same thing with Cisco WebEx is you know you got, we got to consider there may be learners out there and students out there that have low bandwidth um, restrictions on their networks um they're not they don't have 100 megs per second or a gig they have five megs 
and that could just be a, an income thing. And um, you want we want to think about those in, in our solutions too. We want to think about those those students and those learners because not everybody's going to have a very fast internet connection. Um, so for that, I would recommend using a product. You know, and this is not mandatory. I'm not saying like you have to use this is the only thing we're going to use. But Cisco WebEx may actually be, you know, the solution. And Discord has chat built in. But all that to say, get something that has some type of video, audio, and chat built in. Um, and then meet during class. You know, like, like if you meet on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays from 10 to 12, then meet then online, right? So, you know... You already had that time earmarked, and so did your students. So that's a, an accountability thing. You know, I know life doesn't stop because we have this virus here and this global pandemic. It's just um, different, you know. Uh, same thing I, I think about with breaks is, like, how can we keep the momentum going? So um, in this case, uh, I, I would definitely recommend just meeting at the same time. Um, don't change the time because we're already used to it. Your students are already used to it. So let's 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 meet during the same time. So let's say okay, first we got as a tool Cisco WebEx or some other type of telecommunication or tele tele worker software that allows you to have a remote classroom. Um, you need to get some. You need to have access to some type of device that has a mic and a camera you know they say and there's studies out there that show that people want to want to be involved when they see other people's faces you know it makes it feel like more of a human thing uh, it doesn't you know it's not as desensitized um, so I'll, I'll show you some other other software I use so in addition to that remote software I would all, also recommend recording um, your sessions or recording short bits of information and lectures using tools like Streamlabs OBS or you know Streamlabs is actually built on a platform called OBS which is open broadcast software so it's open source broadcast software that allows you to um, record and live stream I use Streamlabs OBS when I'm on Twitch um, I haven't tried YouTube live yet but when I'm on Twitch that's what I'm using and, it, and it, it's really easy to use I'll make another video of an intro to that that you can consider this a crash course on going online during the coronavirus so OBS is another thing we definitely want to do um, get that um, you may want to get some video editing software I recommend um, DaVinci forgive my spelling as I talk so DaVinci Resolve is a free video editor, and it really doesn't take a whole lot of um, know-how to work with. I'm not a video editing guru, guru but I can make my way through it um, to add, you know, effects and to add, you know, subtitles or to even add, you know, little name titles below. So that's one good one. Um, and I'll do a video on that, too, and that just a crash course. I'm not going to go into the expert features just kind of like DaVinci Resolve for educators. Um, but, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, there's a lot of good content around DaVinci Resolve and Streamlabs OBS. So you don't even, don't even feel like you have to stay with my video series. You can go off to other video series that teach you how to use these tools. Um, but I am going to make mine and tailor mine specifically for education. Um, so... That, that'll work there. So we're, we're looking at some of these tools. How do we get on there? The engagement part, like our face and our, our voice and, you know, our messages. How do we get them live with the student during the time we've got them? I think those three will work fine. Now, another thing I recommend is use YouTube or, uh, or Vimeo or some type of video hosting site to capture like video lecturing or anytime you get hands-on whether you're using like a Cisco packet tracer or some type of virtualization you definitely want to to show that you know and uh, to, to put it on the screen so that people can play it back um, and, and when I say you know play it back I mean record it and post it on YouTube like I've I've recently started and I'll stop the music I've recently started going 
um, and putting some of my content that I've been working on on um, YouTube. YouTube is a great platform, it's, you know, to just post your stuff up here. Um, and and I'm, I'm trying to keep some of my educational like content and some of the really subject matter focused stuff um, under 10 minutes. You know, my, my interviews that I put up here, they're going to be over 10 minutes, but um, not the, the little pieces of information. Um, so that, I think, it caters to people actually using it more as a study tool. And, and, you know, think about it. If you start doing this now and you get good at this now, you can have that content for the future when this coronavirus does pass. And I do believe it's going to pass. We're going to be okay. Uh, it's just a matter of time. It'll, when it passes and you're back to normal and you're back to your normal routines or whatever routines changed and you're in person again, you can use it as instructional material. So you can say, hey, everybody, go out to this YouTube link. This is me. I made some video content for you all so that instead of them just needing to go back and, and read the material, um, and I'm a big fan of reading, but I'm also a big fan of watching videos to kind of um, enforce that learning is, you know, they can go and check your channel out and they can watch your videos and they can, and, and it's actually really good practice. I think of it as I started to learn it several months ago, back in December was the first time I ever really started making content. Um, I started looking at it like, hmm, this is kind of like sports. I did play uh, football and basketball when I was in high school and one big part of it was film. Let's watch film about our, ourselves and how we play and some of the mistakes we make. Um, and what I found is it's actually helped me become a better speaker in class. It makes me realize, man, how are my students? I have, I have these quirks that for my students might be distracting or annoying. Um, I'm working on saying like um, and um, like I just did. But there are certain things that are distracting that we don't realize about ourselves until we watch ourselves back. And, and it's low risk. You don't have to go live with it. Just record it. If you don't like it, delete it and start recording again. So that's, that's another idea there. So one, one of the big factors here as well is what type of like activities can you do? How can your students stay hands-on with, with the curriculum you're teaching? And especially if you have a lab, how can they keep that up? Um, if we go all online and our labs are brick and mortar on-premises, well, there's a few things I would recommend. So one is if you're teaching something around operating systems and virtualization, you just have to know about this in general, and that is AWS Classrooms. So AWS is Amazon's web services, Amazon's cloud. Um, so as an instructor, you can apply for this and sign up for it. And what you get to do with it is you're given your own cloud for your classroom and you put in all your students' emails, they'll get a confirmation email and some credits for them to set up VMs in the cloud. So they could set up, if you're doing like a, a server operating systems class or a Windows 10 user class, you can still do everything you would have done in the classroom in the cloud. Now, um, this doesn't require a lot of bandwidth because students, as long as they have an internet connection, can actually connect to the internet um, and, and access these VMs over the internet. And all it requires is like it downloads like a remote desktop file or you can even get some SSH credentials if you're, you're talking about doing Linux and connecting to the system remotely in the cloud. They can get used to that as, you know, a way there they can administer systems, but also how you're teaching class when you're in class. If you have some labs or some walkthroughs you want to do during that live session, you can be in AWS Classroom and you can have them doing exactly what you're doing. Uh, I would, like I said, I would recommend at least recording your screen and your voice so that those that um, don't have an internet connection could come back and watch that session at some point later. Um, and while we're on the subject matter of internet and access to internet, I have read some articles about ISPs responding to the coronavirus in a really positive way by actually offering free, um, free, free uh, internet connections or even improved internet connections. So let's look at that. Um, ISPs coronavirus.
see like data caps are being removed. So, you know, if you have students with a cell phone, they could use their data. They could turn their phone into a hotspot and, you know, connect to the Internet through their phone on their on their devices if they have a Wi-Fi enabled device. Um, if that's not the case, we're going to have to figure out what to do. Um, the libraries may be a good place to go. I know that's that's promoting the spread of it. Um, so that's what there is going to be a unique challenge there. So if you have an, an issue or you have any ideas around that, um, that idea with ISPs and having them maybe even reach out to their ISP and ask him what can be done about this and can there be any internet connection set up. Um, I think most people these days have internet, but I have had a few students in my time teaching that have told me I don't have a connection at home, which is something we have to consider. So, um, Let's let's think about that. Uh, I don't have the solution to that, but I do have some suggestions. One would be talk about maybe going to the library if they stay open and um, call the ISP in that area. Have them call their ISP about potentially getting an Internet connection. And then, of course, your data caps being removed so that they can do the um, unlimited data and connect to the hotspot on here because then they can still remotely connect. Anything live stream, though, is going to be hard. Um, so I would recommend that content for the people with the low bandwidth uh, limitations to to upload your content to YouTube as soon as possible. You know, and I know it's going to be hard to like make the content perfect, but uh, we are in kind of a time crunch as as some of you guys semesters are starting back up and some of you all are coming back together um, as a class. So, yes, AWS classrooms is good. Please let me know if you have any other suggestions. I've used this. I'm going to use this sign my students up for this and we're going to continue in some of our operating systems studies and our server enterprise system studies in the cloud. So um, another unique idea here is how about um, maybe even contacting your IT department and talking about having them set you up a DMZ, which means you can set up a part of your network a demilitarized zone, just like, you know, in Korea, there's a, there is a DMZ that's a safe zone. Um, there's a safe zone on the network where the, uh, servers can be, and computers can be put that are accessible from the internet, but also from a internal network. It is isolated and should be locked down. Your IT department should know how to do that. And, and you can look into it too and help them out. And, allow students to authenticate or VPN into that network and work around it. So you could be like a lab assistant or just you, you're still teaching in the classroom and you have them make the connections as they see you over the internet. Now that's just a dream and an idea. I haven't built that out yet, but I know that it is possible. So think about that. It could be a good idea. Um, what else? Um, is there anything else? I'm, I'm trying to think about what else we could do here. In terms of hands-on lab engagement, please share if you have any ideas. Google Cloud probably has a similar thing that Amazon, the AWS Classrooms. So maybe we could say Google Cloud Classroom. Yeah. So even, you know, if you don't want to use WebEx, Google Hangouts has, they've offered it for free. Um, I'm not sure about the Google Classroom, like being able to have VMs, but we do know Amazon's doing that. So let's, let's consider Amazon. So those are really, those are really some of the big concepts I wanted to talk about please feel free to contact me. I am going to create more videos around this um, idea of, all right, coronavirus is here. How do we do this remote? I mean, also improving the remote learning experience for IT. Um, so uh, feel free to shoot me a message. I've got my LinkedIn in the description below. Um, so feel free to reach out to me, but also please comment and share ideas within this video. Thank you very much and be looking out for some more videos. I'm going to be I'm going to be making videos specifically around the concepts we've talked about, um, how to set up a WebEx classroom, how to set up an AWS classroom and then ideas for labs during the coronavirus. 
you know. Um, so how can we, you know, engage people through that hands-on access to remote systems? Um, so I'm going to do several videos around that. So be looking out for those. Um, and I encourage you to go make some videos yourself. So uh, have a great one. Thank you for, for watching uh, and be looking out for more. All right. Have a good one.